The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the first couple verses of our epistle reading for this past Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Easter. This is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to 6, where, where Peter says, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. My dear friends in Christ, the Apostle Peter wrote this letter to Jewish and Gentile converts to Christianity who were living in some tough times in a time when they faced some severe persecution for their faith. And it was getting harder and harder for them to remain as Christians. It would have been easier for them to just on the earthly side of things to just abandon their Christianity and to forget about that because of the pressures and the stresses that they were facing. And well, if you look at this, when I said it was getting harder and harder to be a Christian, well, there are things that do change in this world, but one thing doesn't change, and that is that it always becomes harder and harder to live as a Christian in this sinful world. Back then and today, Christians are still wondering, is it really worth it to live as a believing child of God? But what does Peter say here? Peter encourages us, well, right before our reading for today, he encourages those converts to Christianity to continue in their faith, despite the fact that that they were facing persecution, to continue in their faith, to live as believing children of God. Peter said, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, craves pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Well, he says fight against sin, fight against temptation. Instead of being lured back into the ways of the world, fight against those things. And then he talks about pure spiritual milk. And by that he's referring to the, oh, basic spiritual food nourishment that we get from the Word of God, that simple message, law and gospel, sin and grace, which shows us our sin and shows us our Savior. He says, crave that. Keep wanting it. And God, as you hear that Word of God, He's going to build you up and He's going to strengthen you in your faith. And Peter says to us, well, keep doing that because he says that, well, you have tasted that the Lord is good. It really tastes good to know that, well, because the Holy Spirit has worked faith in your heart so that you know Jesus is your Savior, well, because you know that, you know that God loves you and forgives you all because of how Jesus lived and died for you and paid for your sin. And now just to hear that, to know that, well, it tastes good to our souls. Well, in our reading then, Paul, Peter says, as you come to Jesus, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, 
You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Well, he begins there, as you come to know, come to Jesus, the living stone, as you who have already been called to faith, as you would crave that pure spiritual milk, that spiritual nourishment from the word of God, what's going to happen is God's going to build you up. He's going to strengthen you in your faith. He's going to keep on doing that. And now he switches from that food analogy to this building picture next. And when he talks about the church, Oh, that's all true believers, the holy Christian church. In this picture, he talks about Jesus as the living stone. When we say the church, oftentimes what we'll think about is a, a building like Calvary Lutheran Church or our Wells Campus Ministry or, or any church that right now we wish that they were officially open and serving God's people with worship services and, and Bible classes. And hopefully that's something that will be possible real soon again. Hopefully that will be possible real soon again. However, the church really isn't the bricks and the mortar, the drywall, and the plaster and the two by fours or even the pews and the altar that are there really when you think about it what the church is the church is you and me and all true believers and of course especially Jesus Christ he's the key the church is built on him and attached to him and he makes us alive and well, despite the fact that we still live in this sin-filled, sin-troubled world that we're in. Well, Jesus, it says here, was rejected by men. And here we think of all of those who crucified him. And don't forget that that includes you and me because our sins put Jesus on the cross and well we all do have this sinful nature which does want us to reject Jesus does want us to abandon him we all have that sinful nature this side of heaven but thankfully what we also have is this new man, this faith part of us that wants to live for our Savior, that loves our Savior, that wants to fight against our sinful nature. Well, Jesus has his enemies, but he was chosen by God and precious to him. Always amazes me when I look at those portions of scripture that talk about how Jesus was chosen before the creation of the world to be our Savior. That always amazes me to think about that, that God chose Jesus. God the Father, he chose Jesus for the work that he chose him for even before he created the world. He chose him and selected him and said that, here is Jesus, his dearly loved, beloved son, the one with whom he was, is well pleased. He says, I want you to be sacrificed on the cross. I want you to be abandoned by God so that you can pay for the sins of the world. It amazes me to think that God would do that to his son. But then when I look at that, it also just amazes me to think about how much that means that God the Father and God the Son must love you and me. 
God the Father, he loves us so much that he would have his son be crucified and abandoned, forsaken by God so that he could pay for our sins. And, and well, Jesus, he loved us so much that he was ready to be forsaken by God and go through that real hell just simply to pay for our sins. And now that just tells us we're so precious, so special in the eyes of God. It, it's amazing. And this is something that we really need to remember at a time like this, at a trying time like this in our Earth's history. Jesus still dearly loves us, and that's never going to change. Well, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. He dearly loves his believing children, and still he wants us living stones to be in his church here on this earth and, and forever with him in heaven. And he's doing everything he can, even using this virus and all of the things that are everything that's going on in our world, He's using all of those things, and now remember, he is the almighty, the all-powerful God. He's using all of those things so that we would be in his church. We living stones would be in his church here on this earth and forever with our Savior in heaven. We living stones by the grace of God are in his church and we can say we are his church. We're blessed also to be, well he says, a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. As living stones, he doesn't want us to be like your average stone that just kind of sits there. But he wants us also to be his holy priesthood. And yes, we are holy by the blood of Christ. When God looks at us, that's what he sees because of Jesus, holy people and holy priests here. And when we think of ourselves as priests in service of God, well, maybe what we could do is think about all of those ways in which we can show our love to one another, well, our love to God, of course, as well. And as we think about the service that we have in this life, well, of course, we're still sinners and, our, and all our righteous acts are still like filthy rags. But here, what does Peter say? Peter says that our service is acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And to be acceptable to God, well, that means it needs to be perfect, but through Jesus Christ, that's what we are, because his blood washes away all of our sin, and his holiness fills in all of the holes where the sin was in our lives. See, and we're perfect, we're holy and ready for heaven. And as our reading says, we who trust in him will never be put to shame. That's because God loves us and forgives us and, well, he's made us these living stones and he wants us these living stones to be with the living stone with Jesus. Well, as I said, in, our, in the church, here in this life, and forever in heaven. And that's what we can be sure of because of Jesus, the living stone, the foundation for our faith. Amen. Let's pray. 
Lord God, we thank you for graciously making us members of your church, uh, a living body that you want to live for you, to serve you, to be a part of your church now here on this earth forever in heaven. Oh, how blessed we are to know that you want us, well, with you now and forever. And because you want us with you now and forever, that's why you gave us Jesus, the foundation of our faith. And with him as the foundation of our faith, we'll never be put to shame, but we can look forward to eternal glory, eternal happiness, free from sin, free from sorrow, free from pain, free from viruses, filled with eternal joy, all because of Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.